green flag. The green flag comes out, and we are on the run at Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Scott Brayton, Paul Tracy, Cheever, all lining up. Seventh, eighth, and ninth place. Good fight. Cheever running ninth. Cheever was superb in qualifying, except the car was very, very good, but he had a fuel pressure problem. He got out of the car absolutely furious because he believed he could have been on the front row of the grid here. Look at him, poke his nose down the inside of Paul Tracy. Now they, too, begin to encounter some slower traffic. But fortunately, it moves aside for him. Back from Scott Brayton's car. Here's Tracy coming to the outside. Oh, difficult He's move, gonna get difficult pinned. move. Oh, they're side by side still. Another gutsy move by Paul Tracy, and he's able to pull it off. Back at the Bosch Park Plug Grand Prix, Mario Andretti has two Canadians, Scott Goodyear and Paul Tracy, lined up just behind him in an ongoing battle for fifth place. And now Paul Tracy is going to give him all the problems he needs, too. Tracy's in attack mode here. Look at Tracy. Tries the high line, the outside line, but John quickly blocks it. He moves up. Tracy darts to the inside, gets alongside John very, very close. John now knows he's there, and Tracy is passed. So John Andretti, who was so solidly in second place just a few laps ago, is now back in fifth. And that Tracy-type move is so risky under braking down at turn three, because remember, they enter that corner at 175 miles an hour. So if wheels touch at that type of speed... Oh, look Paul Tracy, Tracy around comes around Fittipaldi. Fittipaldi gets caught in traffic, but now Tracy is caught behind Al Unser Jr. as they try to lap him. And of course, little Al is not going to let anybody get past if he can avoid it at all. It's no move over. I'm a good guy on this race. It's too important in the points. Paul Tracy tries a high line to the outside. Gets alongside Allen Sir Jr. And Tracy has passed. Now Fittipaldi has to handle him up. Well, Paul Tracy really, really has the bit between his teeth at the moment. But anticipating what traffic is going to do is half the secret to being successful on small ovals like this. Paul Tracy in third continues his pursuit of Bobby Rahal and is in close contact with Ray Hall now and closing in. Paul Tracy moving up on the back of Bobby Ray Hall. Now he comes to the outside, tries to split him. Behind them is Fittipaldi. But the challenge is Tracy's given to Ray Hall. He gets caught in traffic, almost squeezed out of the traffic. And Tracy is brave. He is a man that will take a chance to try and slide down the inside. And Ray Hall knows that, so he has to try and protect his position. But remember, they're rounding turn two here at 145 miles an hour. Now some fast-moving traffic just ahead for both of them. Ray Hall will, of course, encounter it first. Scott Pruitt sees it, moves to the outside, lets Ray Hall through. But now Pruitt has Tracy behind him. Ray Hall moving out as we take a look at the race summary here with Michael Andretti leading all the way from the green flag. And Paul Tracy looking for room inside of Ray Hall, but Ray Hall sucks the door again. No cautions thus far, and look at that average speed at 165 miles an hour with last year's track record at 148 and a half. Paul Tracy makes his stop. The rest of the top of the order of this field should make a stop. But then, Derek Daly, we're talking about a time in the race in which uh, in which we could see some tech. Michael Andretti leads Bobby Rahal. There is Rahal. Just behind him is Paul Tracy, once again trying to make the move on Rahal. With those pit stops, there were some guys that suffered. One of them was John Andretti, who fell back, and Mario Andretti. And look at John right there as he's alongside Al Hunter Jr. And Mario Andretti benefited through those stops and was able to move up into fourth place. Well, John Andretti again in the opening laps after the restart drove around the outside of Bozell and sliced down in under Emerson Fittipaldi. So John Andretti, when the tires are cool or when there's heavy fuel load, this car is superb. Just behind Fittipaldi, there is Ray Hall. Fittipaldi, of course, trying to move. And look at Paul Tracy come around Ray Hall. All three of them battling there. Boy, what a tremendous fight this is. And, of course, Fittipaldi 
is trying desperately to make up a lap to get back on the leader lap. That's now Paul Tracy challenging his teammate. You're right. That's Emerson's key. He needed to catch Michael and try and get that lap back. He will be in real trouble if he gets into a fight with his teammate here. But Tracy was on the move earlier. You can't hold him back. Can Paul Tracy help Fittipaldi in any way at this point? No, I think Paul has to worry about his own race and his own race only. Forget about Emerson. Paul needs to catch Michael because he can win this race. Paul Tracy can win this event. I think he's led almost every race he's been in with, uh, with Roger Penske. Paul's had a spectacular season thus far this year, but he's at the point now where he must keep an eye on his own dashboard. He's got that marvelous computer display in front of him, and he can reach up and from time to time change the different settings and readings but the pits, because of telemetry, are looking at vastly similar readings. But they've got a calculator and a computer, and they can they can project just a little bit further. So he can't. He, he almost has to ignore what's happening in front of him. And something we mentioned about Tracy is so aggressive. He flew off the road so many times at Elkhart Lake, but suddenly he was impeccable at Mid Ohio and has been impeccable here all weekend. So a good, consistent run and uh, showing Roger Penske that he is learning very quickly. Paul Tracy makes his turn into the pits. 148 laps are complete. He relinquishes the lead as he does so, and let's go to Jan Vigas. Paul Tracy brings it to a stop. They kept this very guarded, Paul. They did not show him on the pit board. It was all done by radio communication. The wheels are going on. Now for Paul Tracy, watch for the air coming down the hole. He has to get all the fuel in. We did not see it. He's underway. He's out of here, Paul. 12.6 seconds. And Paul Tracy is on the roll. And what he's trying to do now is get out and get up to speed before Michael comes around. Because if Michael can catch him, he can put him a lap down. There's Michael at the top of the screen. Michael just behind him. Michael, of course, took the lead. Does not put Paul Tracy a lap down. So Tracy remains on the leader lap. Second place is now assumed with that stop by Bobby Rahal. Scott Goodyear comes up to third place. So with Paul Tracy's stop, the complexion of this race changes entirely. Michael Andretti moves back to the front. And there's Groff. Terrible break for Paul Tracy because look here. The yellow almost certainly and in fact does come out. If Paul Tracy could have only stretched this far, you can see there's water pulling out of the point out of the side there by the coolers. And Michael Andretti is going to roll into the pits. This may be a break for Paul Tracy in the other direction now. This could be a huge break for Paul Tracy. He's got all the fuel he needs, and he's about to take the lead. Michael Andretti roars out of the pits. Paul Tracy moving on the main stretch under the yellow. And Michael Andretti does not want to get lapped, doesn't want to get bottled up behind that Penske car in front of him. The pace car is out, and there's Paul Tracy. Johnny Rutherford at the wheel of the pace car will slow this field down. And that gamble that Roger played now looks fairly bright, but look at Tracy. Tracy is going to go to the pits as well. So Paul Tracy will go in. They'll top this car off with fuel, and that will mean that our leaders of the race at least will have plenty of fuel now to go to the end of the run. Well, something did not go right in the last stop for Paul Tracy because he should have had all the fuel that was in that tank. And all it is is fuel as Paul Tracy spins those rear wheels out of the pits. Only 7.2 seconds. Maybe, in fact, a time stop. Jan Bikas. Well, Paul, remember when we watched Paul Tracy stop a few minutes ago? And I said, watch the fuel hose and watch for air. We didn't see the air. In other words, they did not get all the fuel in the fuel tank in the pits, in the fuel tank in the car. So now he came in to get that last little bit. He can use the full richness and go to the end. As they flash across the line, it's now just five laps to go to the end of the run. If Michael Andretti is going to show anything, he must do it rather quickly. The battle for third continues as well between Scott Goodyear and Paul Tracy, as Tracy is back up on the back end of Goodyear. And Tracy trying to go around the out. Oh, he makes it around Tracy the outside got him. of Goodyear. Tracy uses the traffic and gets Scott Goodyear and Tracy up to third place now. Michael continuing to chase for Ray Hall, but Ray Hall is a full second ahead. You have to take chances in this situation, and Michael said that earlier. He might have to take chances. You can't commit yourself to staying inside somebody. Sometimes you just have to go outside and hope that he sees you. One lap to go for Bobby Rahal. 
Will he be able to move himself back into the points lead? He's looking so strong here now. The checkered flag awaits him. Michael Andretti in a last desperate drive on the backstretch to catch Bobby Rahal. But Michael Andretti appears to be totally behind the eight ball as it's Bobby Rahal that takes the win here at Nazareth. Moves back to the lead of the points with Michael Andretti going into second place. Paul Tracy screams for the line now. Finishing in third place, Scott Goodyear will finish in fourth. Paul, a great run for you today. This is a track you test at all the time, but now it was in the big race. Uh, you know, it was a good race today. Uh, you know, I'm really happy for the Mobile One crew and, and Penske. You know, we did a good job today. We ran all day and ran strong. We had, had to make three stops, so that kind of cost us a bit after when we got the lead. But, you know, all in all, I'm happy. It was a good weekend for the team, and I'm really happy for Mobile One and Marlboro.